Good evening. This is Akashwani and I am Nishit Kumar with the news at 9. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates International Convention Center Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi, says it is a gift for the country as it celebrates 75 years of independence. Both houses of parliament face disruption over Manipur violence issue. Over 1 lakh metric tons of wheat and 100 metric tons of rice sold in the fifth e-auction for the current financial year. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh assures country is in safe hands as the nation celebrates Kargil Vijay Divas. Britain opens UK-India Young Professional Scheme offering opportunity to live, work or study in the country for up to two years. And in Japan, Open Badminton, Lakshya Sain and the pair of Satvik Sai Raj, Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty advance to the pre-quarter finals in Tokyo. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the entire world is now accepting that India is the mother of democracy. He said that India's vibrant democracy has been a matter of pride for the countrymen since ages. Inaugurating the International Exhibition Come Convention Center at Pragati Madan in New Delhi this evening, Mr. Modi said, Bharat Mandapam is a gift for the country as the nation celebrates 75 years of independence. भारत के सामर्थ्य का भारत की नई ऊर्जा का भारत मंडपम दर्शन है और भारत की भव्यता का और भारत की इच्छा शक्ति का The Prime Minister also pointed out that it is a historic day as Kargil Vijay Divas is being celebrated today he paid tribute to the heroes who sacrificed their life in the Kargil war आज कारगिल विजय दिवस है देश के दुश्मनों ने जो दुस्साहस दिखाया था उसे मां भारती के बेटे बेटियों ने अपने पराक्रम से परास्त कर दिया था कारगिल युद्ध में अपना बलिदान देने वाले प्रत्येक वीर को मैं कृतज्ञ राष्ट्र की तरफ से श्रद्धांजलि देता हूं the Prime Minister said, seeing the hard work of every worker, brother and sister involved in the construction of Bharat Mandapam, the whole of India is amazed and shocked. Corona ke kathin kaal mein, jab har taraf kaam ruka hua tha, humare desh ke sram jiviyo ne din raat mehnat karke iska nirmaan pura kiya hai. भारत मंडपम के निर्माण से जुड़े हर श्रमिक भाई बहन को हर कर्मी को आज सच्चे हृदय से मैं अभिनंदन करता हूं उनका साधुवाद करता हूं The Prime Minister also announced that the biggest museum of the world, Yug Yugi in Bharat, will be constructed in Delhi soon. He said that India is now achieving things that were unimaginable earlier and there will be no Indian who will not feel proud about the new parliament building. Mr. Modi expressed confidence that India will be the world's third largest economy in the third term of BJP-led NDA and India's growth will be even faster in the third term. Mr. Modi also released a commemorative stamps and coins on the occasion. Earlier, the Prime Minister performed a puja and havan in the complex. He also felicitated the Shram Jeevis who were involved in the construction of the complex. The project, which revamped the old and outdated facilities at Pragati Madan, was developed as a national project at a cost of about 2,700 crore rupees. With a campus area of approximately 123 acres, the IECC complex has been developed as India's largest MIC, that is, meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibition destination. The complex finds its place among the top exhibition and convention complexes in the world in terms of the covered space available for events. The Manipur violence issue continued to disrupt the proceedings in both Houses of Parliament today. Both the Houses were adjourned for the day after facing adjournments. In the morning, when the Lok Sabha assembled for the day, opposition members trooped into the well raising slogans. Amid ruckus, Speaker Rom Birla tried to run the question hour. When the ruckus continued, he adjourned the House till 12 noon. When the House met at noon, Congress MP Gaurav Gogoi moved the no confidence motion against the government. 
Speaker Om Birla admitted the motion saying that he will discuss with the leaders of all political parties and inform about the appropriate time to take up discussion on the motion. As pandemonium continued, the House was adjourned till 2 p.m. Later, when the Lok Sabha met after the second adjournment, it passed the Forest Conservation Amendment Bill 2023 after brief discussion amid the din. Members from the Congress, TMC, DMK, JDU and others continued their protests seeking Prime Minister Narendra Modi's statement on the money poor violence. As pandemonium continued, the House was adjourned for the day. In the Rajya Sabha, when the House assembled for the day, Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar said he received several notices under 267 for discussion on the Manipur violence issue. He said the government has already expressed its willingness to hold short-duration discussions on the matter. Amid the din, the House was adjourned till 12 noon. In the post-lunch session, members from the Congress, the TMC, DMK, Aam Aadmi Party, RJD, Left and others again started sloganeering on the Manipur violence issue. Leader of the opposition, Mallikarjun Kharge, said everyone is ready for discussion on this issue and question why the Prime Minister is not ready to make a statement in the House. Soon after this, the opposition parties staged a walkout for the entire day. Later, the House passed the Constitution Scheduled Tribes Order Third Amendment Bill 2022 with a voice vote. After this, the House was adjourned for the day. As many as six bills, including the Registration of Births and Deaths Amendment Bill 2023, the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Amendment Bill 2023, and the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Amendment Bill 2023 were introduced in the Lok Sabha today. The Registration of Births and Deaths Amendment Bill 2023 seeks to insert provisions for digital registration and electronic delivery of certificate of births and deaths for the benefit of public at large. Social Justice Minister Dr. Virendra Kumar introduced the Constitution Jammu and Kashmir Scheduled Castes Order Amendment Bill 2023. Besides, the Constitution Jammu and Kashmir Scheduled Tribes Order Amendment Bill 2023 was introduced in the House by Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda. Union Coal and Mines Minister introduced the Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Amendment Bill 2023. N.K. Premichandran of the RSP opposed the introduction of bills saying that it is against the federal structure of the country. All six bills were introduced in the House amidst the din. Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution has said that more than 1 lakh metric tons of wheat and 100 metric tons of rice was sold today in the 5th e-auction of 2023-24. The e-auction for the wheat and rice was organized by the Food Corporation of India. A quantity of 1.16 lakh tons of wheat from 361 depots and 1.46 lakh tons of rice from 178 depots were offered for sale from across the country. The ministry further added that in order to control the retail price of rice, wheat and atta, weekly e-auctions are being organized. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. The nation is celebrating the Kargil Vijay Divas today, remembering the sacrifices made by soldiers of the Indian Army. On this day, the country commemorates the Army's triumph over Pakistani troops in Kargil, Ladakh in 1999 after more than 60 days of battle. The main function was held at the Kargil War Memorial in Dras. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Chief of the Defence Staff General Anil Chauhan, Army Chief General Manoj Pandey, Navy Chief Admiral R. Hari Kumar and other top Army commanders attended the ceremony. They paid their respects at the memorial by laying wreaths and visited the tombstones dedicated to the soldiers. Speaking on the occasion, the Defence Minister said, the entire country commemorates the sacrifices of the soldiers of Kargil War who laid their lives to safeguard the country. Assuring the people that the country is in safe hands, Singh said that the brave soldiers protecting the borders of the country have made the entire nation proud from time to time. Mr. Singh said India has great respect for all other countries and also follows norms laid down for international conduct, but the country's generosity should not be mistaken as its weakness. कि हम शांतिप्रिय हैं भारतीय मूल्यों के प्रति हमारा पूरा विश्वास है और अंतरराष्ट्रीय कानूनों के प्रति हमारी प्रतिबद्धता है यदि हमें छेड़ा गया और जरूरत पड़ी तो भविष्य में हम यलोसी पार करेंगे इसका मैं देशवासियों को अपनी तरफ से विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं 
President Draupadi Murmu has expressed gratitude and paid tributes to the armed forces on Kargil Vijay Divas acknowledging their extraordinary valor and the victory achieved. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also paid tributes to the brave hearts of India on Kargil Vijay Divas. Both houses of parliament also paid tributes to the Kargil War heroes. In the Kashmir Valley, the Chinar Corps remember the 527 gallant soldiers on Vijay Divas. They saluted the serving soldiers and veterans who took part in the tough battle at the treacherous heights along the line of control. On behalf of all the ranks of the corps, GOC Lieutenant General Rajiv Ghai paid homage to the Kargil War heroes in a solemn ceremony held at the War Memorial in Badami Bagh, Cantonment, Srinagar. The British government has opened its second ballot under the UK India Young Professional Scheme. This is a scheme for Indians aged between 18 and 30 years with graduate level qualification for visas to the UK. The ballot offers eligible young Indians the opportunity to live, work or study in UK for up to 2 years. The British High Commission in New Delhi tweeted that an Indian national between 18 to 30 years of age with a graduate or post graduate qualification can apply for the India Young Professional scheme visa it further said that the ballot closes at 1:30 pm tomorrow this joint scheme between uk and india was formally launched this year in february under the reciprocal arrangement signed off by prime minister narendra modi and his uk counterpart rishi sunak british nationals would also be offered similar visas to live and work in india Minister for Earth Sciences Kiran Rijiju has said that the role of India Meteorological Department IMD is becoming critical in view of climate change. Briefing media after undertaking a visit to Mausam Bhavan in New Delhi today, Mr. Rijiju said country's weather forecasting systems are better than all the systems worldwide. He said the IMD forecast in the past few years have been accurate. Lauding the IMD, the minister said it has done a tremendous job since 2014 and accurately tracked cyclone Deepak Joy due to which lives were received cyclone before that it was uh, properly tracked from the beginning it was uh, located at a very very initial stage and the prediction the forecast for its uh, exact place of landfall impact everything was uh, being uh, provided by the imd and the necessary actions especially uh, for the disaster management all precautionary steps were taken so there was no loss of lives All the properties. Mr. Rijiju informed in the next three years, the number of Doppler radars in the country will be increased from 35 to 68. India Meteorological Department (IMD) has predicted extremely heavy rainfall activity over Konkan, Goa, Madhya Maharashtra, coastal Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana during the next two days. Isolated heavy to very heavy rainfall is likely over Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, North Haryana, Chandigarh, and West Uttar Pradesh during the next three days. The weather office also forecast heavy rainfall over Rajasthan and Jammu and Kashmir during the next two days. India's Lakshya Sen has advanced to the pre-quarter finals of Japan Open Badminton Tournament in Tokyo today. Sen beat his compatriot Priyanshu Rajawat 21-15, 12-21, 24-22. However, Mithun Manjunath was knocked out of the tournament after a loss to China's Wang Hongyang. The red-hot men's doubles duo of Satvik Sairaj Rangkhireddy and Chirag Shetty also advanced to the round of 16. They defeated the Indonesian pair of Leo Rolly Karnando and Daniel Martin. Indian ace PV Sindhu bowed out in the first round today. She was defeated by China's Zhang Shiman. And in cricket, India will meet the West Indies in the first ODI of the three-match series at Kensington Oval, Bridgetown, Barbados tomorrow. The match will begin at 7 p.m. Indian time. The second ODI will be played on the 29th of this month at the same venue, and the third and the final match will be taking place at the Brian Lara Stadium, Taruba, Trinidad, on the first of next month. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates International Convention Center Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi says it is a gift for country as it celebrates 75 years of independence both houses of parliament face disruption over Manipur violence issue over 1 lakh metric tons of wheat and 100 metric tons of rice sold in the fifth e auction for the current financial year Defence Minister Rajnath Singh assures country is in safe hands as the nation celebrates Kargil Vijay Divas Britain opens UK India young professional scheme offering opportunity to live work or study in the country for up to 2 years and in Japan open badminton Lakshya Sen and the pair of Satvik Sairaj Rangkhireddy and Chirag Shetty advanced to the pre quarter finals in Tokyo and that's all in the news at 9 good night